Welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Today I've got uh, the franchise matchmaker, Seth Letterman. Seth has had tremendous success in business earlier in his life with uh, several different uh, businesses that he had. One was a chiropractic. He went took that chiropractic business up tenfold in three years. I was blown away when I heard his story and wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to hear not only about that, but how he moved from that into um, franchise consultant, franchise recruiter. But as a matchmaker, how did he get that name? And it comes from who he has worked with and how many times they consistently say he really got us to the exact right match in the franchise that was best for them. And I thought, ah, oh, this will be a great show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for Seth. having me, Pat. Yeah. Appreciate so that. I want to talk to you about uh, how you move from being the business owner to the business person that helps so many others get into business owning franchises that are tailored for their specific desires, needs, and gifting. It goes back to my original career path that you mentioned. I became a chiropractor. That was a occupation of passion for me. I was very into fitness and sports, and that was a, a natural path for me, but it didn't take more than a couple of three years before I realized that my true passion was business. Huh. And uh, I was going room to room treating patients, and I lost present time consciousness. I was in the room, but my head was at the front desk or in the billing department, uh, and realized that where I really wanted my time was working on the business, not in it. Mm -hmm. That was a term that I picked up from reading a book early in my career, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, underground best-selling business book. Many people know Michael became my mentor. Uh, and Michael's book really resonated with me mm -hmm. uh, and actually was pivotal for me in going from being a practitioner to being a uh, enterprise developer. Uh, read that book and really Michael's book talked about what was really franchise principles. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't looking at it that way. I knew that creating a consistent, predictable and reproducible result for my patients and for my staff was important mm -hmm. and for myself. Mm -hmm. And what I really was learning was everything that makes franchises successful. So within 36 months, I pulled myself out of working in the business. I was working on it and developed something I never would have created had I not stepped back and treated the business as the product rather than the service that I was delivering as the product. And that's what franchising really was. And what naturally happened was colleagues, vendors would reach out to me to find out how I achieved this success and I would share with them the principles I learned in this book kind of selfishly because they were somehow impacting my business's ability to get to the next level and realized that I really enjoyed helping business owners uh, and wound up being a business coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Went out to California, met with Michael Gerber, the author of the book. Uh, he offered me the opportunity to be an independent contractor and work with other business owners in teaching them these principles to make their business not dependent upon them, to create the franchise model of their business, whether they wanted to franchise it or not, to make sure that they had a business that was buttoned up, had processes and systems and procedures in place to make sure that they and their consumer had a good experience. Absolutely. Uh, and when I freed myself from my business, I was looking for my next opportunity. It was natural for me to look at franchises and what I realized, another pivotal moment for me was I'd be the worst franchise owner because I would want to change the formula for Kentucky Fried Chicken only because I'd want to, not because it needed to. Uh, and realized that where my best skill sets were was helping other people explore and navigate that. But that happened as a result of me looking at franchises and coming across people that were doing what I'm now doing and I saw a very fragmented industry. I saw an industry that didn't really have a lot of thought leaders, uh, no authorities in the industry. And that's what I knew that I always wanted to do in my next chapter, as I did in my last. I just find it really important to differentiate yourself from other people doing what you're doing. And 
getting into this industry was an opportunity for me to do that and have really enjoyed taking people who have never considered franchise ownership or maybe they have and help them find what is the best franchise for them not just a great franchise but a great franchise for them right yeah that's the the whole matchmaker thing and you've written a book on uh, profits are better than wages wages how to achieve the life of your dreams by being in business for yourself but not by yourself so that's a cliche everyone's heard but in franchise ownership that's really what you have you have all of the support all of the processes and systems in place but you're not alone you have corporate and all the other franchisees to support you. Now, you do rep- represent, is that what the, the right term? Represent the over... We represent the industry. Right. Um, my organization works with all the franchises, but we represent uh, several hundred of them that we've vetted and determined to be the types of opportunities the people that I work with would best like to be aligned with. There's 3,600 operating franchises in the US and there's too much information on the internet. A lot of it's inaccurate, a lot of it's promotional, uh, and it's easy for people to look for franchises and get overwhelmed and into paralysis by analysis because there's just too much out there. And they didn't even realize that there's professional guidance, uh, expertise that can take them through making that very, very important decision. That's excellent. One of the things that I'm so excited about in this next segment to go into is really looking at, there there are only about 2% of the businesses out there that are in the franchise industry. However, over $800 billion a year is produced in that industry. Folks, this is the next growth industry that you really wanna look at. This is a business spotlight, I'm Pat Dewar. We'll see you on the next spot. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Seth Letterman, the franchise matchmaker, is on the show today. And we're talking about how people can find their ideal uh, franchise zone. If you're someone who has an interest in looking at creating success for their life, not working for the man, and you're, you're looking for different ideas, then Seth is the guy to talk to in this area. As I said right before the break, just 2% of the businesses in America account for over $800 billion in revenue that's generated for the U.S. alone. And that's something that you want to make sure that you take note of because as we go forward to the next 10 to 15 years, I think this area is going to grow even faster. So I want to get into this segment, Seth, looking at what is your process for finding the best match for the per- people that are looking to get into franchises? What's your process? That's a great question. So the first step of the process, number one, is to determine is franchise ownership the right direction? Actually, is business ownership the right direction? Business ownership is not for everybody. Uh, so we determine if they have the qualities and characteristics that would be suited for business ownership need to have some risk tolerance, right? Uh, Then we determine is franchise ownership out of all the options for business ownership, startup, uh, buying an existing business that's not a franchise or getting into the franchise industry, does that align well with their existing skill sets, their strengths? Uh, Want to make sure that we take what they have and make that transferable to another industry possibly. Everyone thinks they know that they need to go into what they're familiar with. And we know familiarity breeds contempt. Uh, most people I work with are in career transition. They've been in corporate maybe 20 years, they're burned out, uh, they've accumulated enough savings uh, and are exploring all their options, which I think is prudent. 
So when I engage and work with these people and determine that franchise ownership is right for them, I really want to get clear in establishing the criteria that would be most important for them so that I could narrow down the options out of all the franchises out there. So they're only spending time looking at franchises that would be aligned with the criteria we established as being important to them. And through the process of elimination, we get down to a final few where we can go through deeper due diligence. Right. So it's a very methodical, very streamlined, very efficient approach to narrow down your options, not get into the minutia, not get into overwhelm, which is very typical if you go out this alone without any guidance. Oh gosh, I, I looked at it over the weekend. I read your book and and really enjoyed it and, and thought, you know, I wonder, you know, if they have uh, franchises in certain areas. And so I just started looking into it and, and talk about rabbit hole. Oh my gosh, down the rabbit hole in a, in a heartbeat. Um, I'm curious, the, the people that are attracted to you, what are some of the challenges that they're feeling that that actually makes them want to go in this direction? So I think people are getting to a point where they realize that there is no job security. I call it the illusion of job security. Right. And they've always had this dream of business ownership. Who hasn't? It's like writing a book. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to write a book. Everyone thinks about business ownership, but they don't realize what's possible for themselves. There's a lot of misperceptions and false assumptions. They think franchises are over a million dollars. They are only familiar with McDonald's and uh, that it has to be all their own money. They don't realize that there are franchises that are $300,000 that could replace their income possibly. Uh, that they could use their retirement account without any penalties or interest in the capital injection for that business. That there are organizations like the Small Business Administration that would provide up to 70, 80% Mm -hmm. of the capital for that business. So they have options that they never ever consider for themselves. They don't know what they don't know. Right, right. And and I know that that when I was looking and when reading through the you know, the book and such and doing the research on this, I thought I was just fascinating that this is definitely a growth industry because you look at the number of boomers that are going to retire, but they're not going to really be set for retirement. But they may be set to start a new thing is that is that who who i, I want to look at you know the, the avatar yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 who, i would who's say the ideal person that's and that's a great question I, I would say that age range 35 to 45 would probably be the sweet spot i certainly have people a lot younger than that i get some millennials that that recognize early on that they better take charge of their own destiny uh, and i get people that are retiring but they're not ready to retire uh, they want to do something. They want to keep that brain busy, but they don't want to work 80 hours a week. Uh, but m most of the people I work with are coming from the corporate arena. They've done this for several decades and they're ready for a change. They want to take charge of their own destiny. They want to make money for themselves. They want to spend more time with their family and kids. They want to leave a legacy. They want to have succession planning. They want more than they're getting from just having a J O B, yeah. I, I one of the things that I'm curious about is a, a lot of people that are entrepreneurial minded, they are looking for the best route. There are options they could create their own thing, but what's the benefit of looking at the pre-done, if I can call it, franchise? So business in a box is that what we're looking at with so franchises? With a franchise, what you're getting is a business model that's been proven, that's been duplicated and replicated several times, depending upon the tenure of the brand. And there are processes, systems, and procedures in place to run and operate that business. And there are franchise owners they can speak with that have achieved the level of success that they're looking for. Awesome. They, folks, we're here with Seth Letterman, and he is the franchise matchmaker. The clients that he's worked with have said consistently he finds the right franchise for their gifts, needs, and placement. And so with that, I, we're, we've got another section coming up, and you won't want to miss it. This is the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. We'll see you.
and welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. I've got Seth Letterman on the show today, and he is the franchise matchmaker. Uh, he is an author. He has been created great success for his clients, bringing the exact right match of the franchise that will uh, that they'll succeed the most easily in. So, Seth, I want to get into what are some of the barriers that people have and getting into uh, or associated with franchises? So, uh, you know, there are, again, a lot of misperceptions or false assumptions about franchising. Uh, And again, the process that I take my candidates through and investors through in making that decision really gets them clear on what skill sets and strengths they currently can take Mm -hmm. uh, and bring into business ownership. Uh, where are their industry preferences? Uh, what's very important is the due diligence process. There are several steps you would want to go through to determine whether or not this business is going to meet your professional, personal, and financial goals and objectives. And people don't know how to approach that uh, and wind up making decisions emotionally rather than logic and data and then make their decision with logic and data they could be emotional about their decision, but make the decision with logic and data. So I take them through this very streamlined step-by-step approach in determining what they would need to know at every step of the process that a franchise will take them through in determining whether or not they're a good fit for the franchise because it is, it's a mutual evaluation process. So we are taking all the, a lot of the barriers out of their way is what I'm seeing, just consistently going through. And that, that's one of the things that people say about you is that you're really good at eliminating those blocks. But I'm curious, would young people be uh, good candidates for franchises? I mean, I think about college, you know, these kids going to college, they get out of college, they spent a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to go to college, wouldn't it be better to find their what they love already and, and, and lead them in that direction? Or what's your thoughts on that? I think that there are probably a subset of that age range and population that that could work for. I think uh, work ethic, uh, life experience, wisdom comes from experience and probably would need to have experienced life uh, because most people are driven more by pain right. than pleasure. Um, and I would rather see people come from inspiration than desperation. Oh, absolutely. And I think there is possibilities for millennials in franchising, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of the aging baby boomers, children, they want to put into business because they recognize the cost for college is astronomical. They could put them in business for that. And for the right person, that could be the greatest gift they could ever do for their child. Is they put them. That's in what I was curious because I, I I know that the 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 boomers are retiring, the millennials are moving in, and uh, and so it, it's it's just interesting as far as a, a possibility. Um, the the next thing I'm curious about is the so you what I'm what I'm thinking is is that aspect of cost for investment. I, I know a lot of people think it, it takes millions. You mentioned a number earlier, it could be as little as just a few hundred thousand, 300,000 or more. And yet people don't have to have that all in the bank ready right now, right? That is correct. Uh, investment in franchising can range uh, as little as $50,000 to well over a million. Wow. So, And there's no direct correlation between the investment and expected returns. If a franchise has real estate involved, uh, there's going to be more upfront cost that doesn't necessarily dictate to bottom line results. There are a lot of options that don't require real estate that could generate more income for them. Uh, There's no guarantees in franchising like anywhere else in life. What you do have with franchises is the greatest likelihood for success, but that is predicated on that it's a good fit for them. I think people that failed in franchising in a system that works just wasn't a good fit. Right, well, one of the things I was curious about is what makes franchising so much better than creating your own thing? You have a 
business that's already been proven. Uh, you have a brand, you have a trademark, you have a support system and training. There is not any franchise that I would ever stand in front of and represent where I wouldn't tell you that the investment to purchase that franchise would be tenfold if you had to recreate that from the beginning. Even if you came from that industry, which would make sense to think I could do this on my own, I always tell people, you probably can make a better hamburger than McDonald's, but do you want to compete with them? So <laughs> that's a natural reflex to want to, I could do this on my own, is it worth it? The amount of time, effort, and energy that you will save by buying a model that already exists and being able to look under the hood with the franchise disclosure document, the industry is regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. You have audited information, you're gonna to speak to owners. There's no better way of getting a full transparent look at what you're getting into than franchises. So quick question though, we, we got a little, just a little bit before we go to break. The Can you run one of these things part-time? So they come in three buckets. Uh, owner operator businesses you're buying yourself a job it's your roto rooter plumber going out in his van doesn't have the aspirations or desire to have an enterprise and employees the other end of the spectrum are executive models people used to call them passive or absentee i don't like those terms only two things run on their own a business and a car and that's usually downhill so executive models where you're managing a manager would be considered part-time uh 15 hours a week can't all be done in the evenings and on weekends to manage a manager running that business. And then the remainder would be semi-passive where you are the manager and you're doing it full time, but you have employees. Very good. Okay. So uh, one more section with Seth Letterman. He is the franchise matchmaker. This is Pat Dewar and we're on the Business Spotlight. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Seth Letterman is on the show today. He is the franchise matchmaker. Uh, I'm so excited to, for you to be able to hear some of the keys to finding the right franchise for you. Seth, you've, you've shown us how you create success. You've shown us who would be the right person, but what is the process in connecting you directly? What do you want people to do that are considering franchising as a future? So if you're considering franchise ownership as a career transition alternative, perhaps as an investment strategy to diversify your portfolio, reach out to me. Uh, in a very short phone call, we can determine whether or not this is the right direction for you. Uh, and if it is, I'll let you know. And if it's not, I'm going to tell you that too. Uh, it's in everybody's best interest to know as early as possible if we're putting a ladder against the wrong wall. So come out to my website. That link is there. You can come on there. There's a lot of great information. And let's get a call. We'll determine from that call if it makes sense to take the next step. And that step would be a discovery call. So right. we'd spend a good hour going through and getting very clear on what's most important to you and your family to achieve through franchise ownership, and then set me up for success in researching options that I'd present to you. Yeah, so I know one of the other things that I would really encourage, because I read your book over the weekend, is that they download the PDF uh, that is there on your uh, on the franexus.com website and, uh, and get acquainted with some of the challenges and some of the questions that they need to ask you uh, when you connect. And then once they once they do get through that area of uh, the, the discovery call, so to speak, and really looking at, is it right? Um, what are the processes that you walk people through next? So after we've 
I've presented options to them and through a process of elimination narrow them down at some point we're going to engage with these franchise brands and make introductions uh, the franchise brands will take them through uh, benchmarks uh, in determining whether this is the right fit for both sides uh, and that will include a review of the franchise disclosure document lengthy document it's basically an offering prospectus. It's updated yearly, it's audited information. It pr provides the consumer the ability to look at several options and have that information delivered in the same format to make a uh, comparison you know, easier. How much of that process are you involved in? So fiduciary responsibilities uh, prevent me from making any kind of earnings claims. Anything uh, about performance will be within that document. The brand will review this document with them. I always encourage that they seek legal counsel when they get to the point of decision making. Franchise attorneys are invaluable in reviewing the documents, making sure that they understand their obligations and commitments to the franchise for that what is a 10 year agreement in most cases right and understand what the franchise's obligations and commitments are to them for that 10 year agreement so i help them in how to properly review that document and encourage them to get legal counsel when they get to the final uh concept that they would consider moving forward with do you do you provide that for them the the uh, the attorney or is that something we that have relationships with professionals that they would need throughout any step of the process accountants uh, certainly attorneys uh, various funding sources that will help in providing an education on the options they could consider and the implications of those options so everything they would need is within the realm of my expertise and guidance in providing resources I have tools I provide at every step of the way. My goal is to make sure that they maximize every step that they're at in the evaluation process, get all the information they need, dot every I, cross every T, and making sure that when they get to decision-making time, they're leaping over a small stream, not jumping over the ocean to get there. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that I also saw is that you actually um, shorten the distance between I want this and uh, their ability to actually, in a sense, close on the purchase of that franchise? Well, I think uh, there's a buyer's journey in, in anything. This is a huge decision, and I don't take that lightly. Uh, extremely important that the timing has to work for the candidate. This could be a, a three-month process. Uh, it's gone as long as a year for some people. On average, it's about six months from the initial phone call till they be signing on the dotted line. So this has to be in alignment with what's gonna work for them timing wise. And Absolutely. we get clear on that in the beginning too. Absolutely. So they should go to your website. They should uh, connect with you and do the call. They should download the book, make sure that they get most more information, um, but allow you the opportunity to actually help them find the ideal, really the ideal uh, franchise and model that will be the most profitable and most successful for them. And that is something that I'm, I'm so excited about. I know that as we, as we wrap it up, is there any, any final, yes. what you'd want so, somebody to uh, right I now? I think important for everyone to know that I don't put square pegs in round holes. It's not good for the peg and the hole doesn't like it. I'm about a good fit. I need to sleep at night and knowing that I made a good match of both sides is great. And the best thing is there's no cost for my services. I am compensated by any of the franchises I would introduce them to for the introduction and for that matchmaking. Very good. Folks, this has been the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. I'm Really glad that I had the opportunity to have Seth Letterman on the show today, the franchise matchmaker. I encourage you to connect with him right away if you're looking at a transition in your career. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next time.